Hey, what's up YouTube? Your boy Chris out in the Caliente Garage. Some of you have wanted to know, how do I connect a Can-Am trailer to a Honda Goldwing? If you guys buy a Can-Am trailer, it's gonna come standard with this funny looking plug on here, a round plug, it's got several pins inside. Can-Am actually install these on their trailers. Well, how do you connect it to a Honda Goldwing? If you guys have a six wire, five wire, or four wire there is a simple solution if you guys have a four wire you can go to your can-am dealership and they will sell you an adapter that will plug directly into this can-am oem plug and that's for the four wire well what if you have a five wire if you have a five or a six i want to tell you about a product that i use when i connected my trailer and it was made by show chrome it's called a five to a four wire trailer converter and it's exactly what i use when i connected my can-am to my honda goldwing so if you guys are interested and wanted to know how to connect the can-am to a honda goldwing stay tuned to this video if you already currently know how to connect your trailer lights from a can-am to a honda goldwing this video may not be for you so stay tuned to this video and I'm going to talk to you about this 5 to a 4 wire trailer converter. Okay, this is not going to be an installation video, but I'm going to talk to you about how it works. And hopefully at the end of this video, you guys will kind of get an idea of how this uh, 5 to a 4 wire trailer converter actually works. So before we get into that, I want to show you guys the difference in trailer plugs. Now this is what the Can-Am plug looks like when you buy your Can-Am trailer. Okay. But there are so many different types of plugs depending on your bike setup. This is a six wire that I have on my Goldwing. Some of you may have a five wire flat. Some of you may have a four wire flat. So it just depends on your setup. Here's another setup. This is a five prong setup. So how do you know which wire is which? All you see is, is connectors. Well, all of these are pretty much the same. They're just created differently. They all do the same thing. They're just made differently. So I want to kind of show you guys how it works. Okay. Looking at the back of this Honda Goldwing, this is, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a six, what they call a six flat. It's the same as a six round. It's just this one is flat and this one is round. But they pretty much, they're all wired in the same. So I just want you guys to, to kind of, they're all the same. They're just made differently. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do with this gold wing, well, how do you know which wire is which? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can determine which wire is which. I like to use a 12 volt circuit tester. If anybody works on your your motorcycle and, and they don't use one of these uh, they're most likely gonna blow a fuse so how do you know which one is ground which one is right turn which one is left turn which one is brakes which one is tail lights so again they all pretty much are made the same so what I want to do in this demonstration because I'm gonna be okay I'm gonna be changing out this plug so I'm gonna open this up so you guys can see it Okay, now let's look at these wires. And again, it's gonna work the same on all of these. They just look different. Your white, you can't go by the color code, but if it's hooked up correctly, you can go by the color code. White is generally ground. Yellow is generally left turn. 
Brown is generally tail lights. Green is generally right turn. Blue is generally brakes. So which wire is which? How do you know which one is which? And this is a Bush Tech type plug. If you look at this five, if you look at this five wire flat, you got blue, which is generally brakes. Green is generally right turn. Yellow is generally left turn. Brown is generally your tail lights. And white is generally your ground. Okay? But what if they're not colored? So you're gonna have to find out what each wire represents. And again, this is a funny bush tech plug. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna demonstrate to you how would I find what each wire means. So I'm gonna turn the bike on. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do, I wanna cut these wires off of here. We're gonna just disconnect them because I'm not going to be using this plug anymore. Okay? We're going to take them all off. Okay, now we have the wires exposed. So, now let's just pretend that we don't know which color is which because sometimes you can't go by the colors because it depends on who connected them. They might, they may not have used the right colors. So now, generally white is ground. So I wanna hook my ground clip to my ground. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is turn on the bike. I'm gonna turn on the right turn, left turn, tail lights, and in the brake lights, okay. So I'm gonna turn on the bike and I'm gonna tap each one and it's gonna tell me exactly which one is which. So I'm gonna turn on the bike and the first one I wanna touch, I wanna find the tail lights. Generally brown is the tail lights. Make sure no wires are touching. If I touch the brown and it lights up, that means this is tail lights. It didn't light up. So that means that he's got a blown fuel somewhere because his trailer lights are not working or I either have it connected to the wrong ground. Now, let's move this over to the black. Make sure that I, that I have it connected properly. Now let's touch another one and see does it lights up. So before I assume that his bike trailer wiring is not working, I'm going to connect this to a battery. I just want to verify that it's not my circuit tester. Okay, this is a regular 12 volt DC battery. I'm going to put the clip on the ground. And when I touch the red, this should light up. So that lets you know that my circuit tester is working. For some reason or another, either his wiring is totally wrong or it's not working. And I think that his wiring is not working. Okay. Okay, this, this is a separate problem and uh, I'm gonna have to run it down while his trailer wiring is not working. But I just wanted to show you guys how this pretty much works. I'm gonna open this up. Basically what you're gonna have to do, it tells you right on the back of the box. It tells you right turn, brakes, left turn, running, and ground. And it converts it to a four wire, which is right turn, left brake, running, and ground. Okay, so looking at this converter box, 
you got five wires. One, two, three, four, five. So if you have five wires coming out of the bike, you're gonna have you're gonna have to run it to the converter box, and it comes out to a four. Now, if you don't have a regular four flat on your trailer, you can cut this end off and put any end on it uh, that will work for your setup. But this is how it connects to the bike. You gotta have five wires coming in. So remember, you can't go by the colors. So for example, it's showing blue is right turn. Normally, green is right turn. It's showing orange is left turn. Normally, yellow is left turn. Okay? It's showing brakes being red. Normally, brakes are blue. Running lights are normally brown, so that's correct. Ground is generally black, but normally white. And as you can see, they're showing green. Okay? So you can't go by the colors. Okay? Now there is your white ground. There is your tail lights. Here is your left turn. And here is your right turn with the brakes uh, converted uh, into both of those. So you can't always go by the colors. That's why it's important to use a circuit, a fuse tester or a 12 volt circuit tester to, de to determine which color is which. So don't get caught up in colors. You wanna make sure that each circuit does exactly what it's supposed to do. So you gotta either put this under your seat uh, before it comes out of the bike or you can either put it in the trailer but if you got five wires coming out of your go wing, you got to run your output into here. Okay, this is your, or your input comes into here from five wires and it converts it down to four wires. And I'm going to show you what my trailer looks like. Okay, if you look inside of my trailer, there is my converter box. I ran it on the front of the trailer down in this little crack down here. Uh, I figured that was the best place for it. It wouldn't get smashed being on the at the nose of the trailer. And I just covered it up. I just laid it down in, in there like so. And I covered it up. If you look inside, if you look at your Can-Am trailer, because when I first bought my Can-Am trailer, it had this funny plug on it. And I wasn't sure which, you know, what those meant. So I actually cut it. Once I cut it and opened it up, I realized that within, within this uh, round plug, it only had four wires. Look at that. Four wires. The same as a four wire flat. So if you guys have a, if you have a four wire flat on your bike, this is the same plug. I don't know why can am use this big fat plug instead of just a standard four wire flat, but I guess that's, you know, being Canadian and all. But once I cut the plug, if you look inside, it's just four wires. Right turn, left turn, brakes is integrated in the, into that, brown, tail lights, and the black in this case would be the ground. Remember, you can't go by the colors cuz white is generally ground, but can am use black for ground. So don't get hypnotized with colors. You just want to make sure that it functions a certain way. Okay. So once I cut this plug, I realized that it was a four wire. And that's all this is, is a four wire. So you could actually take the plug off your Can-Am. You could cut it. If you got four wires on your gold wing. And you can run it to a four wire straight through. Or in my case... I put the converter box in the nose of the trailer. I pull the wire that generally connects the trailer lights. I pulled it out and I drilled a hole in the bottom of the trailer and I connected everything in the nose of the trailer and I ran it back to the bike. So as you can see with my plug, I have a six pin round, but one of the wires is not connected. So technically, I only have four wires connected within this plug, even though it's a six pin round. So I hope I'm not confusing you guys. I hope you kind of 
understand what I'm trying to explain to you guys. Even though you got this funny plug, there's only four wires in there. So all you have to do, if you got four wires coming off your bike, you can cut it off and wire it straight through. Or you can buy an adapter that'll convert this from however many pins this is down to a four wire. And you can connect it that way. If you don't have that, you will need this five wires that takes it down to a four wire. And then you can run that straight into your k &M trailer. So I hope this video helps some of you guys out. But that's how you actually connect your k &M trailer to your Honda Goldwing. If you guys want to continue to watch, I got to figure out why his trailer is not working. I'm not sure. He probably has a fuse blow. Uh, I'll check that in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and get him a plug connected on here because he has a five wire and I'm going to be connecting a five wire flat for his trailer. So this is going to be his setup. We're going five to a five. I'm just I just taken his seat off and I know you can't see it, but it looks like his trailer Looks like his trailer wiring is fried. I can't tell. I'm going to have to remove this seat. But as soon as I open it up, I smell the burning smell. Looks like he might have fried his trailer wiring setup. I'm going to remove the seat so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, let's get a closer look at his setup. I know his fuse is probably blowed because I see some charring around the plug. Yeah, it looks like the fuse is blowed. I can get this out. But looking at his setup, whoever put this in here, put it too close. Whoever put his trailer wiring setup, put it too close to the, to the back. And that's where a lot of pressure is going to be applied. Why, when somebody's sitting back there or so I don't know it looks like it's fried look at that I mean they didn't give them no they didn't give themselves no room to work wow I can smell it I don't know if you guys could see it it's charred real good look at that Okay, I put some light up here so you guys could hopefully you guys can see a better picture of it. Uh, this is why it's so important to not let anybody install your accessories. Uh, whoever installed this, they put it right here at the back. Well, a lot of, of the pressure of the seat would put pressure on this converter box, and it looks like it melted it. If you get a close-up, look at that. Can you guys see that? And as a result, it did blow the fuse. It did what it's supposed to do on this end. Luckily, it didn't start a fire. Uh, could, this could have easily have set his bike afire. You can even see where it melted down on this, on this zip tie here. Uh, I'm not going to plug this back in because this could start a fire. And I don't want to be responsible for something that I didn't do. But I'm glad it did blow the fuse. It did, the fuse did what it was supposed to do. I'm gonna put that back in here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna leave it out. That's a, I'll let them know. That's a 15 amp fuse. I'm not even gonna put the fuse back in there. So uh, this is why it's so important to make sure that whoever work on your bike knows what they're doing because if they don't connect things back right, this is what can happen. So I just want the customer to know that I didn't do this. It was already like this. I don't wanna get the blame. Look at that. I wouldn't connect that back. That's a that's a fire ready to happen. Well, anyway, um, I'll contact the customer and let them know. That's why it's so important to make sure you don't let anybody work on your bike. If you have any questions or comments, put it down in the comment section below. I'll talk to you guys later. See you.